सो इज मैच इन विजिबल गाइज ओके फाइन सो येस्टरडे वी टॉक्ड अबाउट वन ऑफ दी स्टैंडर्ड वर्चुअल स्विच दैट वी हैव ऑन द एस एक्स आई होस्ट this vss is connecting to the physical switch and this this vss has two uplinks on this we have another interface called vmk0 Scissor physical switch. This is your port group. And this is your VMIC. Till now, is is it clear, guys, or do you have any concerns? This is your VSS. Now, if we talk about the disadvantage of VSS, first. you have to configure this switch on each and every device manually so it is difficult task for administrator to manage vss so far so good guys is it clear the issues we have with video vss hello the another yes, issue sir god the another issue we have with vss is you have to create it on individual device device and it doesn't supports features like netflow and so on now when we talk about vs vds vds stands for virtual distributed switch don't worry guys if you are not able to understand we'll do it by lab vds stands for virtual distributed switch for the distributed virtual switch you need a management plane and for that management plane you have something called v center so v center is the management plane plane of your yes xi host it provides single plane of glass u a single plane of glass of glass to configure your multiple esxi host so v center is nothing but a virtual appliance you need to deploy a virtual appliance and in this virtual appliance 
you need to configure you need to add your esxi host manually host manually so what is your v center v center is just providing you a management plane nothing else so it is a centralized management for your esxi host the another task that you need to configure on the v center is is a data center so there is a hierarchy you need to add a data center in data center you need to add a compute cluster and in that compute cluster you need to provide a esxi host data center defines the region of your devices it is a region for your devices means the location whereas compute cluster defines the logical grouping of your esxi host means logical grouping of your esxi host the logical grouping means whatever the esxi host you are adding in a compute cluster they are working logically as a single unit any concern or do you want me to elaborate this point Hello, guys. I'm audible. Yes, yes, you're audible. Yes, in the, yeah. In in this compute cluster, what do you need to do? You need to add your ESXi host. Means physically, your ESXi host are different, but in compute uh, cluster, logically they are a a single unit. Means. Suppose this is the ESXi host one. This is your ESXi host two, and this is your ESXi host three. So logically, they are single unit. But if you see in the uh, means uh, as a physically, they are different unit. What is the advantage of compute cluster? Suppose you have a one VM running here. on this csxi host and this vm suppose this host goes down then through the compute cluster this vm will be migrated to this csxi host this is the advantage of compute cluster in compute cluster you need to define your csxi host which is the part of the group now next thing that we are going to do in the compute cluster is to configure a vds as vds stands vds stands for virtual distributed switch means this is your esxi host 1 this is your esxi host 2 this is your esxi host 3 and this esxi v center this v center will provision a same switch on every device and this is called vds means virtually distributed switch
and this virtual distributed switch span across multiple ESXi host. So far so good guys, or, do, or does anyone have any concern? Guys, let's make this class uh, attractive or interactive, right? Yeah, Kiran, continue, please continue. If you have any concerns, guys, please let me know. Okay. This VDS, suppose, is connecting to the physical switch. Uplink 1, uplink 2, uplink 1, uplink 2, and uplink 1, uplink 2. And this vCenter has provisioned this VDS. VDS. This is your physical switch. This is your physical interfaces. Zero and it's one. Now, as soon as you provision the VDS, what do you need to do? You need to configure the port groups. And these port groups that you're going to configure here are called distributed port group. Can anybody tell me why it is called distributed port groups? It's connecting to a distribution layer switch considered as. Okay. Any other any other options? Why we call it distribution or distributed port group? The same port group will be configured to all of the switch, all of the ESXi exactly. host. Exactly, the port group that are distributed among each ESXi host. That's why it is called distributed port group. The port group distributed among each and every ESXi host. That's the part of the VDS. That's why we call it as distributed port group. Now I have a question with you guys. Okay. Uh, let me know if my screen is visible. Is my screen visible? The new paint? A distributed proper support within the cluster or uh, apart from uh, different clusters? It support different clusters as well. Not okay. an issue. Thank you. But just for simplicity, we are making cluster just to make sure that we have the proper HA available. For example, if any of your ESXi host goes down, then the VM center can take an action to relocate that VMs to another ESXi host within the cluster. That is the beauty of using the compute cluster. Okay, uh, guys, uh, can we proceed further? I have a quick question with you guys for you guys. Suppose this is your ESXi host one. This is your ESXi host 2. These two hosts are connecting to the same VDS. So let's say it's a VDS 1 on the same port group we have a same port group configured here so let's say port group for vlan 10 now on this port group i have one vm here
I have a one one VM configured here, and it is using pod group VLAN ten. And I have another VM configured here. VM two. VM one. And these two both are connected to the same VDS, but on different DSXI host. So, can somebody tell me how the traffic will be routed between the VM one and VM two? So, as of now, in this topology, I'm taking single switch, but it can be possible that we have a multiple switches. they are in the same vlan so we don't need routing okay but how the traffic will be routed we don't need routing fine i agree with you but how the traffic the, tra will, the traffic will pass through the vds switch only it will not go to the physical switch at all why so um, being it is a uh, single vds distributed switch mm -hmm. right? so the broadcast traffic will pass within the switch itself guys what v center is doing for you it's just a management plane it is not impacting your data plane no okay the data plane will be the same as it is for vss means the traffic from vm1 will be routed to your physical switch the traffic from vm1 will be routed to vds from vds to physical switch from physical to switch to back to your the vds and back to your vm2 that's why i asked this question just to know your understanding guys so if we talk about vds vds means it is just the configuration part not impacting the data plane the data plane will be going from the uh, locally from the esxi host so vds is beneficial for you for you when you have multiple esxi host in your environment so it is job of your administrator to configure all these esxi host from a single plane of glass that is your v center it is just impacting the configuration but not the data plane so far so good guys or do you have any concern issues and why we called as okay okay fine uh, uh, any concern nothing okay so guys today after 11 we will be taking care of the labs okay but right now i have to cover some more topic related to nsx v and nsx t uh, v and t so we'll target on this and then we'll talk about the configuration of pod group so my question with for you guys what is a pod group what is a pod group for those who works in vmware please don't need to answer it the people who don't know about it can give it a try anyone knows about pod group we talked about pod group right so we talked about pod group here right uh say so can you please uh, speak instead of writing on the chat 
is it just like vlan okay fine anything else it's a communication uh... it is the logical connection from the vm host to the vss okay anything else it's a pull off for group it will create a group mm hmm yes somebody it's was a group it. actually for creating the pool for the particular uh, uh, vms mm hmm anything else it's a communication for uh, to logical to the physical link okay okay so guys if you are from physical networking it is just nothing but the characteristics of your interface or port like let's say this is your physical switch on this physical switch might be you have a interface let's say this is your f a 0 by f 0 by 1 so in this port you can either configure as trunk or access vlan right so you can configure trunk either access vlan or trunk vlan second you can configure security settings quality of service that's it so port group is nothing but the characteristics of your interfaces that includes vlan it can have a single vlan or multiple vlan it can have the quality of service configured then it can have the timing policies then it can have the security settings then it can have security settings vlan timing policies this and additional settings like net flow so now we have two types of port group one is for vss and one is the port group means we have two port groups port group and distributed port group as i say the distributed port group these settings will be configured per port group level but in single port group when we talk about the port group means the vss what we can configure vlan either single or multiple and the security settings and the rest of the settings like rest of the settings like this will be configured on the switch level so this is for vds this is per vds level per port group level so far so good or does anyone have any concern
No, distributed groups are configured in vCenter level or? Yes. Distributed port groups are configured in the vCenter level. Because for distributed port group, you need a VDS. And VDS you can configure only from the vCenter. Guys, any concern? See, in VSS, you mentioned that switch level. What do you mean by it's a physical switch that you're talking here or a virtual switch? I'm talking about the virtual switch, VSS. Okay. Nothing we are talking about the physical switch here. It's a virtual lab or okay. virtual environment, guys. That is standard switch, correct. Right. So that's why I distinguish. Okay. Let me give it a box here just for your learning. VSS and VDS. So uh, today we will check on the labs as well. So we'll do some labs, right? And then I will showcase you how you can configure the VSS and VDS and then port group. But before that, I need to cover some topics. So far, so good guys, or does anyone have any concerns? Nothing we can use. No. So somebody will ask you what is the VMware networking? Will you able to explain what are what is the VMware networking actually? This is the traditional way of VMware networking. People nowadays also using the same way as well. They are not using NSXT. If they are not using NSXT, then you are they are using the traditional way of the VMware networking. Yes, guys, any concern or we can proceed further. Can we proceed further? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Now the main topic that we are now moving towards is your NSX. Okay. Now there are one technology that VMware introduced in 2002. 2013 14 that is nsxv why nsxv was a hit because it overcome challenges like what unnecessary usage of bandwidth physical bandwidth What was that? Did we remember yesterday's class? What was the unnecessary usage of bandwidth, physical bandwidth? What was the issue? Is somebody from the yesterday's class is available today? The issue was, suppose you have another VM here. Let's say VM tra tra unnecessary traffic body. Yes. So we have VM two. So let's say three. And this VM is connected to the same videos on the same ESXI host. So let's say it's a VLAN 10 is the VLAN 20 is the port group name. Now, if VM one, VM three residing on the same ESXI host, how they communicate? How they come to and come, come back. Exactly. That is the problem we face in the traditional uh, networking VMware. NSXV solves the carpet bundle issue. Sorry. Can you repeat again? And I didn't hear you. It's a hairpin pin uh, exactly. traffic issue. Exactly. Hairpinning, correct. The, the another usage of NSXV was NSXV was revolving around only vSphere.
no other technology is supported no other technology is supported if somebody has worked on the v center or nsx v they might know about it the another problem was you need to need to deploy additional nsx v controllers so means you need one manager plus three nsx v controllers Guys, did you get me or do you want me to elaborate this point? Uh, yes, if you yes. could elaborate, please. Yeah. So now when you talk about the SDN technology, what we talked about yesterday. Do you remember? Management plane, control plane and data plane. So here on the V side, NSX V manager is integrated with v center but for manager we have a management plane called nsx v manager and one vm is deployed for it virtual appliance is deployed but when and similarly we also need three vms for nsx v controllers Did you got me? Do you remember about SDN? Three planes. What was the planes? Management plane, control plane and data plane. Yes. What is the management plane here? What is the management plane? This is the management plane. What is the control plane? This is your controller. The another drawback of NSX V was no support for containers, Kubernetes, so I'm typing KDS and clouds. The the one the last difference that I will uh, talk here is it uses It uses VXLAN as a encapsulation protocol. And the port number for this is UDP six zero, sorry, four seven eight nine. Now you don't know what is VXLAN? Or anyone knows about VXLAN? Does anyone on this call know about VXLAN? I heard, but I don't know. Okay. Don't worry VXLAN if you don't know. Is, yeah, VXLAN is a layer 2 technology which works on layer 3. Okay, and why we need VXLAN when we have STP and uh, other layer 2 technologies? See, it can be VXLAN can be extended to from one region to other region, like uh, uh, the same VLAN can be extendable. Okay, from the VXLAN okay. perspective. Yeah. We will discuss about it, man. Not an issue, okay? So, these are few of the NSX V drawbacks. That's why the and uh, the v uh, the vmware has taken a decision to discontinue this product and what they did they did another they introduced another product in 2018 that they called them as nsxt but now in 4.0 they renamed it to nsx so this is nsx v for you now the advantages of nsxt Yes, guys, 
the disadvantages of nsx will be will become the advantages so first it is not only supported to v square it is supported on cloud containers it is using different uh, cnis like calico anteria and native ncp second you don't need to deploy additional nsxt controllers means your appliance has inbuilt controllers which we talked yesterday your whatever the nsx manager you are going to deploy the same nsx team manager will have your controller as well as your management manager so you don't need to deploy additional nsx team managers or oh, controllers you just need to deploy three nsx team managers you are good to go and that will be working for you Okay. So it is controller and uh, manage, management plane is inside that? Yes, in a single virtual appliance. Okay. You don't need to deploy additional controllers. If you're going to deploy the NSXT managers, that, that will be working as your controllers as well. Okay. Okay. So guys, uh, till now, any concern? Okay, so ESXi host mm -hmm. is deployed on a bare metal server mm -hmm. as a virtual software. So NSXT, NSXV, uh, if they are the virtual appliance, they are coming within the ESXi host package or they are separate RPMs? Okay, so if we talk about vCenter, we talk about NSXV manager controllers nsxt manager nsxalb all are uh, all virtual appliance means you don't need to buy any hardware it's just a vm or ova file open virtual appliance that you need to deploy or uh, sorry not deploy download from the customer vmware connect, customer connect portal and from there you will get the ova and then you can deploy them as a vm in your environment yeah so each one is a different ova or all together single ova see if we talk about this one we talk, we are not considering them let's give it a uh, okay let's say no we are not deploying them NSX team manager is a single OVA, a single bundle that you can download from the customer connect portal. From that okay. single OVA, you can deploy your edges that we do, uh, edges not, are nothing but the virtual router. Then you need to, uh, you can deploy the additional NSX team managers as well. If you talk about NSX ALB, NSX ALB is nothing but NSX advanced load balancer that has a separate OVA. Okay. So each one is a separate OVA. Yes, we and vCenter itself is a different OVA. Right. Okay, uh, yeah. so guys. Basically, we have to for NS60, so we need to install only one appliance, sir, one VM. So no need yeah. to deploy for uh, three controllers, VMs, and that is not required. Am I right? No, you need to deploy at least three NS60 managers in your production environment, because if your one manager goes down means your controller and your manager goes down. Although the data plane is not impacted, but, but 
it can cause an issues in your environment that we can discuss in future they are in sync or they they, they have to be in sync i'll take i'll uh, uh, brief you about the nsxt architecture today okay right so they have to be in sync their databases have to be in sync okay so far so good guys so far good yeah Yeah. Anyone has any concerns? Guys, can you give me five minutes? I'll join. I'll be back in five minutes. Just give me five minutes. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um. Uh, is it fine? Can we proceed further? Yes. Yes. Okay. The another major difference we have on the NSXT. that i forgot to this uh, told you is the use of different protocol different encapsulation protocol that is genie which works on udp 6081 if you don't know about geneve you don't know about udp or the vxlan you don't need to worry i'll cover this thing in detail from next week because next week we will be talking about the nsxt uh, deployments okay now moving to the next level let's talk about the architecture of an sxt in more detail so how many uh, understood the architecture of an sxt yesterday hello any idea what we learned yes yesterday we talked about three different planes control plane management plane and data plane ajesh What is your name, guy? I mean, hello. Are talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, my name is Sharif. Sharif, thank you, Sharif. Sorry, man. Okay, so in this we have three planes. So what we are going to do now? Let's talk about the NSXT manager and compare with these three planes. with the nsx team manager let's say we have this is your first nsx team manager this nsx team manager has few components in build like reverse proxy what is the reverse proxy guys anyone from the network background can let me know what is reverse proxy so reverse proxy will work from the public network to the internal uh reverse proxy stand for guys load balancers okay yeah. i'll explain you in what terms i'm talking about the reverse proxy here the another thing i have the policy ui policy ui will provide you the way to do operations like crud c r u d means create read update and delete then you have another plane called management ui management ui is something called the old way of configuring your nsxt managers means this is the one but this is for the people who used to configure the nsx v managers so it's a manager ui this manager ui then we have something called controllers these controllers are actually your control plane 
after this controller we have something called cluster boot manager and this cluster boot manager is responsible to create a cluster of database means whenever you are going to configure anything it have the database and this data store within the nsxt is called as porfo db so whenever you are going to deploy additional nsxt managers it is the responsibility it is the responsibility of the cluster boot manager to make them sync so for example let me do this like this so now if you are going to configure like this then we have a same persistent database across all the nodes guys got it these are your nsxt managers that you need to deploy the reverse proxy means suppose i have an ip address uh, configured on this manager is 192.168.1.10.11 and .13 so what i can do i can deploy a vip and this vip is called as virtual ip address that we can assign to this nsxt manager twenty and this vip only works if we have all the nsxt managers deployed in same network if they are deployed in same different network then you can't use this functionality of vip then you need to deploy something called external load balancer external load balancer like anybody can give me the example of external load balancers the f5 appliance is it yes external load balancers like f5 So this load balancers will have a NSXT managers as a backend servers. This is your NSXT managers. One NSXT manager two and NSXT manager three. This has an IP address. Let's say one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot ten. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot two dot ten. Ten and dot ninety two dot one sixty eight dot three dot nine, and the VIP IP address will be, let's say something ten dot one dot one dot ten. So far, so good, go guys. Or do you have any concerns or any issues?
So that 10.1.1.10 IP is for the F5 management yes. interface. Uh, it's a VIP IP address on the F5. Means it's a virtual server IP address. And this virtual server IP address is configured on the external load devices. For the external load balancer, we have only two NXT manager. No, I have configured three men. Three, three, okay. That is. So I think his question is how many maximum? Yeah, correct. Okay. The maximum you can configure in environment is three. Okay. Maximum is three and minimum for the lab environment, you can configure one, not an issue, but it should be a lab environment, not the production one. And I will showcase you the issues that you will have when you are an effect manager uh, goes down. So now if you talk about a manager, a single manager is active at a time at a given time, but controllers, all controllers are active at a given time. And this process is called as sharding. Confused or got it? Guys, confused or did you get it, this point? Can you explain? Not, yeah, yeah Can not you... confused, but trying to get. Uh... Okay. So now, suppose you want to configure uh, the NSX configuration, right? So might be you need to configure a, a logical segment or might be a load balancer or something like that. So for that, all your ESXi hosts that, ha that you have in your environment, right? So if you remember yesterday's topology, give me a minute. Yeah, so all this ESXi host, will be connected to the managers, right? So they were all connecting to the same NSX team manager. But we talk about the controllers. They will be connecting to Suppose this one is connecting to this controller. This is connecting to this controller and this is connecting to this controller. This process is, there, is, is there any primary primary for this control uh, no for this manager? Actually, it will be auto selected. You don't need to do anything. So oh. whenever you're going to configure the appliance, it will automatically select one of the active appliance. So mm -hmm. what I have seen in the environment. The oldest is the uh, the primary appliance. Well, which one is creating first? Exactly. Okay. Which I have seen in the environment. Okay. okay. But it can be auto balance. Means uh, depending upon some uh, keep alive or something like that. Because there is no process or there is no documentation about it. Yeah. So if one, one scores five, then how uh, remaining two, which one uh, take the priority? Uh, that is automatically I mean, dependent, man. There is no process. Okay. There is no documentation about it. Okay. Okay. It will be auto selected. Okay. Yeah, maybe there is an election. Yeah. There is no <laughs> election actually. <laughs> there will be an auto election. Like no, no tonics. No tonics. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't know about Nutanix. I know I heard about Nutanix, but I don't know much about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. In Nutanix, there is a, an election for this one. Yeah, no, even the cluster, we have the collection. No? Yeah, yeah, Most correct. Most on primary will be second, second will be primary. Yeah. <laughs> Nutanix is nothing but they are deploying the, you know, agents on your ESXi host, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the correct. agents are sending their data to the Prism or Prime. 
So they, you have the CVM or the Nutanix VM configured on the SXI host and that are collecting the data and then sending it to the prime server, I believe. Am I correct? Yeah, that is a two way we can do it. The okay. HP is there. Okay. So guys, till now you have any concerns? So about the data plane, let's talk more about data plane, which we uh, talked yesterday. We have something called APH. We have something called APH. What is APH guys? No idea. I talked about it yesterday, right? Appliance proxy hub. Through this appliance proxy hub, your controller is connecting to your SXI host. And through this appliance, your management is also connecting to this SXI host. So let's say this one. So this is called as MP management plane. And this is called as CCP cluster control plane. This is called something called MA. And then we have something called this LCP. Called MPA. Management plane agent. This is called something LCP. Local control plane. Till now, guys, we are good. Or we you didn't you need some more details. So for MA management agent, we have something called TCP one, two, three, four, port number. this port if so if you're trying to boot your uh, if you are trying to create this esxi host for nsxt consumption and you see it is failing at 48 percent means it's a firewall issue which is blocking the traffic and you need to open the tcp1234 on your firewalls and similarly for ccp we have something called TCP one, two, three, five. Again, the same problem. So you have to make sure that you have the appropriate firewall connections on your environment. Now on this, we have something called NSX proxy. This NSX proxy will be a module installed on your SXI host, which is responsible to get the information from the managers and controllers. And I'll showcase you when I'm going to prepare this in the environment. And this NSX proxy will further down the line will receive three, four components. Like your VDL2, VDL2 stands for virtual distributed layer 2, VD, VDRB, virtual distributed routing base. Then we have VSIP that is for firewalls. Then we have VIDS and VIPS that is for virtual distributed IPS and IDS that is intrusion prevention system and intrusion detection system. All these parameters will be installed
configured on the OS kernel of PSXI host. So in case your management or controller goes down, the ESXi host will have or everything in its OS level. So your data plane will not be impacted. Guys, do you think this is the right way I'm teaching you or do you want me to teach via PPT? No, not, not PPT. This is, uh, yeah, this one this is, is more okay. useful. Yeah. This is more interactive. Because in PPT, I'll just read and speak and then you people won't yeah, yeah, yeah. Then no need of this class, no. We will take from uh, <laughs> internet. <laughs> you share the PPT, we will go. <laughs> so, number of source available in internet. So, exactly. From there, yeah. We need live, 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 live. So these boxes will be, you know, will be in your mind for some time, right? So even I, when I was uh, learning uh, NSXT way back in 2019-20, right? So uh, my teacher taught me the, say, the same way. Mm. He did not introduce any of the PPTs, the same way I am introducing. No PPTs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, can go, we can go with PPT to customer. Exactly, yes. <laughs> that is what's... And my question is, how is the market now in SX? So all the companies are adopting the NSX technology? Actually, what I heard, the NSXT is adopting only, means right now it is using only 18% of the market. Okay. Still 82% mm -hmm. market has to be captured. Oh. And the problem, the problem NSXT is always is that you don't need to buy any hardware. Okay. For example, let, let's talk about Cisco ACI, right? Okay. Cisco ACI has two biggest problems. One, it's a hardware. So every time you can't ask customer to go and buy the hardware. Correct. Vendor locking it. Mm. Exactly. Second, it does not have any cloud support on ACI. So ACI is struggling to get these things. Cisco is struggling to get these things. For NSXT, you don't need any hardware, man. Just go and deploy the OVA. You don't need to wait for someone to deliver the hardware. Then you're going to put it into the rack, install it and everything, right? Only license part we have to buy, correct? Mm. Exactly. So license, you need to check how many cores, devices, how many cores or CPUs you have. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, you can uh, get the license. Okay. From the yeah. So in a typical uh, environment, ESXi host and NSXT will be deployed on a same bare metal server or different? Doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. Just you need to make sure that they should have the network connectivity. That's it. Okay. If it is residing in some other data center, I don't care. Okay. Because so all mix and match are possible. Yeah. Just you need to make sure there should be a proper latency between these two appliances. Second, there should be the proper network connections. All the appropriate okay. fiber rules are open. That's it. If you have everything in place, then you are good to go. Okay, makes sense. Okay, guys. So this is what we need to discuss about the NSXT architecture. So uh, let's meet in another five minutes and we'll talk about the lab. Okay. And the lab right now is not on the NSXT. It will be entirely on VSS VDS. From next week onwards, we will be targeting the NSXT labs straight away. Yeah, sure. So anyone has any questions or we can take a break for five minutes. Anyone, any questions? Yeah, one question here on the right side diagram. Mm -hmm. uh, for the external load balancer, you the 10.1.1.10 .1 .1 IP. You mm -hmm. said that it's a virtual VS IP. Right. So uh, in the real world, how that physical appliance of F5 has uh, its own management in interface, a different Ethernet zero connection physically to manage the F5 itself. Okay. Besides so guys, that. first of all, F5, you are not going to buy the hardware anymore. Okay. So even you are going to buy the virtual appliance for them. It's again an OVA from the virtual. Oh, F5. I see. Got it. Okay. okay. You don't need any hardware. Okay. And if you're talking about management, yes, 
in F5, you will get some of the uh, interfaces like the management interface that you call for Ethernet zero. Then you have the uh, interfaces for the connectivity to the, your upstream devices for the uplinks. Then you have another interface uh, connecting to your uh, backend switches or servers. Then you have another uh, interface connecting for the HF. So yes, these devices comes with some interfaces. So at, as I said earlier, these are the virtual appliances. So you can extend or remove the network interfaces as per your requirements. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's have a quick break and then we'll connect in five minutes. And I'll meanwhile I'll open the lab. Yeah, sure. Hello. Hi, Riaz. Yeah, hi. Uh, as of now, the five guys has been registered for the pre booking. I request everyone to please do register for pre booking. So you will get the offer of VMware V Square 8.0 recorded video. So also we can continue in the next Saturday. So minimum starting at this training required 10 candidates. I request everyone to please do the needful and complete the registration. Uh, I think, uh, Riaz. So means uh, this call will be starting in another four minutes, right? So before okay. we start, then you can repeat it again. Okay, fine. I will wait for the guys will join. Sure, sure. No. Okay, I think they might be on break. Or I think you can also continue for the same for the regarding for next week training. Yeah, sure. So we are on for next week, right? Because the 10 candidates required to start the training. So if we can just do the recommendation to the candidate, so we can continue the next Saturday. Uh, sure, sure. I will also convey the same to them. Not an issue, Riaz. Uh, Riaz? Yeah, hello. See, yeah, yeah, thank you. Then. Yeah. See, this pre-booking offer, That what are the complimentary videos that you will provide to us? We can provide VMware vSphere 8.0, CCNA, or Palo Alto, or AWS. SA. Oh, any one of them, huh? Any one of them, yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Because already that NSXT, we are giving 50% off offer. In the market, you yeah, won't okay. see the NSXT training easily. Okay. For, then only for 10 candidates, because as of now, fire resistance has, has been done. Fives are mm -hmm. remaining. Okay. Okay, yeah, let me check and then I'll update you. Sure. After that, after this training, I'll live share the link once again in the group or the chat. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. okay. You can ask me about the NSX cup on production side because I was last company I was working with Book My Show. So Book My Show was the first customer to deploy VMware, vSphere, and vSAN in since 2016. I was Handling an AGM infrastructure of book my show. You can ask something if anything regarding for the VM role. Oh, sure. Uh, Last year, actually, we have migrated from VMware to AWS. Okay, okay. Again, um, after a few years, you are going to migrate again from AWS back to data center. Just uh, in a couple of I love to, I will love to <laughs> listen that if anybody wants to from downgrade yeah, from no. AWS to VMware, the cost of AWS is very high for a long run. Nowadays, exactly. people are moving cloud to, uh, no, yeah, uh, on premises. Yes. Yeah. So the people started moving from cloud to on premises and this will become trend in within two, three years. Yeah. yeah. It started already. <laughs> I uh, have a question. Uh, can we pay the fee in, uh, you know, to installment? Is that possible? Yeah, you Sorry? can do that. You can do that. No problem. No extra money is required for that. Maximum to installment is allowed. Okay. Well, which number uh, we need to pay? It in? I, 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 I'll share everything after this training. When the q and will start, no? Okay. I'll share everything. Fine, fine. Thank you. A total of six weekends, right?
Yeah, sorry. Expected to be uh, five. Total uh, uh, training program will be uh, six weekends, right? Expecting to be in five weekends, but in case we are not able to complete in five weekends, we can stretch it to six weekends or seven. Not an issue. Oh, okay. I think the NSX labels is I think tenth lecture. I think right. Eight, yeah, nine. so we are almost completing two, two, or two and three today. So from the from uh, now onwards, we will be focusing on labs. So the lecture will be lab plus theoretical part. So I believe every weekend we can cover two topics. Actually, in my days, actually our trainer has came from Australia for the deployment in two thousand nineteen somewhere. NSX T was really it was new, and that time was two dot zero was released. Mm -hmm. Now actually, I can see that training is available. That time the deployment was very difficult. Yeah, how's so open? And it was a actually not for a greenfield deployment. Basically, for the brownfield deployment was there, and it was very tough for a existing environment. You are integrating with NSX. You are doing a fresh deployment. It is easy for integration. For the production of existing thing, it was really tough. Now, man, we have moved towards 4.1, 4.1.2. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about my street okay. four years back. That time, NSX was really new in the market. Right. So when I studied, I studied 2.4. And after okay. a month, I come to know that VMware has introduced 3.0. Now they, they introduce, integrate with F5 also, the external load balancer apart from yes. EVS. Yes, we can integrate with uh, uh, F5. It can be integrated with uh, NSX ALB as well. So there are a lot of things you can integrate. You can integrate with Polo Alto Firewalls as well. Oh, that's for a micro segmentation, something for that? Or, or uh, kind of service insertion. Kind, of, kind of service insertion, yes. Oh. How is the job market for this one, NSX, NSX now? Not for only for NSX, if you are having a complete VMware pack, pack you can say along with vSphere, vSNSX. Yeah, VCF. That, yeah, VCF. That's, you guys, yes. say, that, that's everybody will say you as a software defined guy. Not only for a vSphere. If you are a champion in vSphere, you should aware of that vSAN also. Okay. okay. And along with that, NSX. So, hmm. means if you, if you know about compute, you know about vSAN, you know about NSX, then you are a complete product of NS VMware. Oh, okay. Because nobody is using only for a vSphere in the market. If you go for a storage, nobody was buying a external hardware or external storage for that. Everybody is using vSAN. Apart from, along with vSphere. And if you are using a vSPAN and vSAN, just additionally you need to get a license of NSX. Mm. And you can say entire same features what is there on the cloud. Because the MN NSX is came in the market because we, we integrated because of the micro segmentation. It was some PCI DSS requirement was there. That time we wanted to the integration of NSX. That is one of the main advantage of NSX nowadays as well. So people are using only for the micro segmentation also. Before NSX, you can't do actually. If you don't have NSX, you can't do the micro segmentation from the And in fact, you can remove your giant router also. For L3. Okay, guys. Uh, Riyaz, can, uh, can I start now? Yeah, you can continue. Uh, Kiran, uh, how actually we'll do that uh, lab? Uh, so, is there any okay. option for us? Okay, so see, actually, there. Uh, if you talk about the lab, you need to build your own lab or you can use the VMware HL for the hands on lab. Okay, just give me a minute. So this is the VMware lab that I will be using and I can share, you can create your own login into the VMware HL. Okay. These are the free labs that you can use for this one. So in that scenario, people like me, right? We don't have any hardware, right? We do, we can't build our own labs. So what we do, we always prefer to use this one. These are the labs which you can use, create, delete, whatever you want to do. Okay, these are high, uh, free available free of cost. And it is n number of times. So this is from CDP or from the VMware itself? 
it's it's uh, not from CDP. It's not from VMware. It is actually from VMware, but it's for available for everyone. Okay. Okay. So I'm I will not say okay. Yeah. Okay. You are doing training. You will be authorized to do the lab within two hours only. No, we will not do that. This is the free tool that you can use anytime, anywhere as per your availability. And you can extend it as per your requirement as well. Okay. So it's, uh, we are using it because it is easily available for, for you guys. But if we are going to provide you the lab, then it will be a hectic, hectic job for us as well. Got it. For sure. Yeah. So I'll not say, okay, man, you are uh, doing the training. You're authorized to do, use the lab only for a, for an hour, for a day. Right. So it required a lot of resources and it is not easy to build. So how to access? Uh, guys. Uh, okay. I'll explain you. Uh, you want to get this knowledge today or might be, I'll give you the knowledge tomorrow means, uh, next week. Is it fine? Yeah, next week we can go ahead. Yeah, next week we'll you, yeah, anyone of you can create your own account and I will tell you how to access them. Okay. So as we discussed, we are going to talk about the VSS. This is your ESXi host. This is I'm going to log into the ESXi host. Login, let's say root. And then I'm going to use a password. So the password is same for everything. That is VMware one is one exclamation mark. Now on this ESXi host, this is a standalone ESXi host. It is not managed by the vCenter. To confirm, let's go to the networking. And on the networking, I can see there is one virtual switch configured and the name of the virtual switch is V0. This V0 has four port groups. Two uplinks. What are the two uplinks? These are the two uplinks currently connected to the physical switch. These are the physical uplinks. So if you say, these virtual switches have two physical uplinks connected to the physical environment. And this is your standard V switch. Now, if I, these are the port groups currently connected, forget about anything. Just think about the management because we are not doing the data center virtualization lab or oh, training. If we would be doing that, then it will cover the V motion in the storage as well. But right now, we have one management port group configured and it is connected to the physical adapters like VMK zero, VMNIC zero and VMNIC one. And this adapter that we have for the management is the VMK zero, the same, which we have discussed in our lab, in our uh, documentation. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more port group. Let's say, let's add a port group. What it is asking, it is asking you to provide the name of the port group. Let's say VLAN 10. This is a name. We have to provide the name. Then we need to provide the, the num the VLAN ID. Let's say VLAN 10. Then it will ask on which particular vSwitch you want to add this port ID. I'd say, okay, let this V switch have this port group is connecting to this V switch. Then I have three settings, security settings, promiscuous mode, Mac address change and the false transmit. So if we go, give me a minute guys. Sorry. Yeah. If we talk about this paint, right? See this on the VSS, what we call port group, we can configure the port group on the single VLAN or multiple VLAN or security settings. So if we check on the lab, we have single VLAN, 
or multiple VLAN. Then we need to configure the promise case mode, MAC address change and force transmits. Does anyone know what these security parameters are doing for you? No. Anyone from VMware? Uh, security shaping, right? Yes. These security settings are in three parts, promiscuous mode, MAC address change and for transmits. So let me explain you. The promiscuous mode means if you want to make the replica of the traffic to transmit to third party device, like for IPS and IDS, then you can accept this one. If you want to reject, you can reject or you can inherit from the virtual switch. If we talk about MAC address change, means every virtual machine which is configured in the ESXi host or the vCenter, it will provide you the MAC address. But in case you want to use your own MAC address and you want that the traffic will be hitting to that MAC address will be allowed by the vSwitch, then you can give the MAC address change, except. Otherwise, reject is a default one or you can inherit from the vSwitch as well. But for force transmit, force transmit means when you have a different MAC address used or configured on your virtual machine NIC, which is not provided by the uh, uh, VMware, then you can transmit the data using that MAC address. To do that, either you can accept it, reject it or inherit from the vSwitch. So for example, you have one virtual machine or you have a server that you want to migrate to the virtual machine. So you want to keep the same MAC address. So in that scenario, during the migration, you need to accept them. Otherwise, by default, it's always reject. Now I have this V10 configured. So I can go and configure any of the virtual machine and then allocate that particular port group, VLAN 10. So as of now, there is no active port. There is no VLAN ID. Oh, I configured the VLAN ID as well. Yeah, you put it zero. Sorry. Yeah, now we have VLAN 10. But you see, we don't have any virtual machine on it. Now, I told you something else as well. Let's go to networking, go to virtual switch and click on this virtual switch and click on edit settings. See on the virtual switch, what is asked? The MTU, the physical uplink means the physical uplink connecting to the physical switch. Then we have uplink to connecting to the physical switch. Then we have some parameters like nick teaming, security, discovery and traffic shaping. So traffic shaping is for your quality of service. The traffic shaping policy applied to each virtual network adapter attached to the virtual machine, virtual switch means these settings you need to configure on the virtual switch level. Now let's discuss them one by one. Link discovery means it will be sending the probes to your physical switch to check the liveliness of the interface. If it is up or down, if it is down, then what it will do? It will disable the NIC interface. Talking about the security parameter, I said earlier as well, this can be inherited to the port group. Either you can change it on the port group level or you can configure on the switch level moving ahead guys if you think i'm too fast let me know i can be a little slow now the another thing that you need to define is this load balancing mechanism load mechanism based on ip hash mac hash port id and failover explicit order let me explain you that in detail Suppose 
this is your v switch let's say this has your v switch now i have two uplinks connected no we can't see your screen we can't see anything you can't see my screen guys i'm sorry let me share my screen once again okay let me know when it is visible to you yes one now suppose you have v switch now you have two vms connected so the first thing that i am going to do here is vm1 vm2 now on this v switch we need to identify the load balancing mechanism we have load balancing in this load balancing you can define on the basis of originating port id what do you mean by that means a uplink like vmnic 0 will use port id of vm2 means vm2 traffic will go from here and vm1 traffic will go from here depending upon the originating port id guys are you following along or do you have any concern the another load balancing mechanism we have is load balance on the basis of source mac hash means it might be possible that i have a mac address of a here a colon a colon a colon a colon a colon a whatever it is and this side we have something called a b colon b colon b colon b colon b, b. so it might be possible that this mac address i have wrote down incorrectly this mac address a will go from here and this b will go from here so this is based on the load balancing mac the third but one i think there's a typo there vm inc vm nick 1 will be using port id of vm 2 it can be anything it can be random okay okay so there is no uh, see it might be possible this port id you are referring the vlan no no port id is okay let me show you something give me a minute let me know when my screen is visible to you The port ID is something, let's say, every switch will have a port, right? So it is not visible on the ESXi level, but it will be available on the vCenter level. So when we talk about the VDS, every port within this will have the ports assigned. So VM1 will be assigning a port id it's a virtual port id assigned by the virtual switch similarly vm2 will have a virtual port id assigned by v switch so on the level of that port id that vm2 traffic will be routed guys are you following along if i say here let's say v switch mid settings okay let's go to this nick timing port id then we have source mac i hash then we have ip hash the ip hash will be calculated depending upon the source and the destination ip address of the vms 
So in this scenario, on the physical side, you need to configure something called Ether channel or LACP that has to be configured on the physical side. Use of explicit failover order. Use of explicit failover order means we have to define one link as an active and one link as a standby that you need to define here. So might be this one. Click move mark as a standby. Then this VMNIC to become a standby. All the traffic will be routed by the VMNIC zero only. In case there is any issue on the VMNIC zero, the fallback is kick in and the tra traffic will be routed to the VMNIC two. This fallback is only available when we are using the use explicit failover order. Other than that, IP hash one, MAC hash and port ID, all the two links are working in active active. They are not working in active standby. So we have to mark is active. If you are using this explicit failover order, then your uplinks will be in active standby order. And you need to define explicitly which uplink is active, which uplink is standby. And you need to so click on load balancing. Do we need to configure LACP? On which one? On the physical switch. On the physical switch, you need to configure LACP only in one scenario when you are using the route based IP hash. Okay. If you are using this one, then yes, on the physical side, you need to provide the LACP. But if not, if you are using this one, then it will be random from the VMware end. Okay. And then we are done. This is your. So all the settings, if you go through, give me guys. Okay. Let me share my screen. This one. Okay. Not the, yeah. So now if you see on the VSS level, on the VSS level, we have VLANs configured and the security settings configured on the port group level, but quality of service, timing policies, Security settings can be configured on the switch level only. Guys, are you following along or do you have any questions? Don't worry. We haven't checked about the VDS till now. If we are not able to cover the VDS today, then we'll start from the VDS uh, on, from next weekend. So is it fine guys? Or do you want me to elaborate once more on the VSS part. If you have any questions, you can ask anytime. Hello. Yeah, no questions. Sir. No questions, right? Yeah, fine. Yeah, now I have another task for you guys. So now what we'll do, we will log in into the V center. Second, add ESXi 03 in the V center. We can't see your screen. You can't see my screen and this is strange. We can see. Is it visible now? Yes, now it's visible. Okay. We will log into V center. We will add ESXi 03 in the V center under existing compute cluster. Then we will create a new VDS. Fourth, we will connect the host to that VDS. Fifth, Create a new VD port group, virtual distributed port group. And we are good. So now let's do one thing. Let's share my screen once again. Is my screen visible guys?
yes this is your v center we logged in into the v center successfully now after logging into the v center i said you to add the host into the compute cluster this is your v center this is your data center this is your compute cluster in this compute cluster i have two esxi 01 a and 02 a is currently connect configured so let's do let's go ahead click on actions and add host so as soon as you provide the host detail it will ask you the fqdn what is the fqdn let's copy it from here copy paste root click on next save next and finish see something is happening now what is the current state of the esxi03 maintenance let's, mode let's go ahead and exit the maintenance mode now how many hosts we have in this compute cluster three years closed we hold so virtually they are working as a single esxi host this is the cpu total allocated is this this is the ram total allocated is this and this is the storage total allocated is this so all these three sxi host are currently associated with same compute cluster and logically they are working at the same click on 03 click on networks you see there is vlan 10 configured which we configured and then we have vm network do we see any distributed switches no do we have any distributed switches here no we don't have if we go to configure go to virtual switches do we see any any distributed switches no no because we have one virtual switches configured so let's maximize this okay let's move ahead and go to the okay guys these four are the first is for your inventory second is for files and folders third is for your storage and fourth is for network so let's click on network click on data center click on create a new vds new vds so it says distributed switch click add a new distributed switch so let's say vds 1 as soon as you create a vds it will ask you what version of vds you want to configure let's say i want to configure 8.0 next now it will ask you do you want to create any distributed default port group i say no i don't want to it says number of uplinks what do you mean by that number of physical links right this is number of physical links per host okay means if you are defining four means you need to provide maximum of uh, four uplinks to this vds if you are defining two means maximum two uplinks are defining can be configured per vds per switch per host sorry click on next click on finish and see our vds is connect configured we have one vds and there is automatically configured one distributed port group for you and it is recommended not to utter anything with this port group because this port group is for the uplink interfaces and it is always trunk which we talked yesterday see all the vlans are allowed and it is auto provision so it is requested not to utter anything on this port group guys are you following along or do you have any concern yeah yes no we are good
Okay. Let's see how much time left. Can we proceed further? We have 10 minutes. Let's see. Let's cancel this one. And see, do we have any host? No, we don't have any host configured. Do we have any ports? There is no ports. Let's click on DVS. Click on create a distributed virtual switch. Let's say test one. Click on next and it will ask you these details. What are these? Do you want a static binding or MFL binding? Static binding means every VM that you're going to connect to this port group will be done automatically statically. Port allocation static or elastic or fixed. Elastic means as per your requirement, the number of ports of this virtual switch will be increased or decreased. But in fixed, it will always 128 only. If these ports are exhausted, then you need to spin another VDS. Sorry, port group. So let's say elastic. Next thing, the next thing that you need to provide is the VLAN type. What is the VLAN type? Let's say it's VLAN. Let's configure a VLAN 10. I am also enabling the customized default policy configuration because as I told you, all this changing will be done on the port group level, distributed port group level in VDS, not on the VSS level. So you need to define the security policy. Then you need to define the quality of service. We have ingress quality traffic shaping and egress traffic shaping. Then you need to define the uplink policy the same way you did on the VSS, the same way you need to do on the VDS, sorry, virtual distributed port group, VDP, same way, nothing changing. The only way is changing, I'll let you know. Do you want to enable the net flow or not? No, I want to disable. Click on next. Do you want to block all ports? No. Click on this and click on ready. Your first port group is ready. See, these are the port IDs I was talking about. See port and this is the port ID. And they all are in VLAN. So this, this default uh, rate port it will create automatically or we need to See, we, we set it that. There are two options. Okay. When you create a distributed port group now, there are two options. Either you can select elastic or fixed. If you are selecting as fixed, then it will allocate only that requirement that ports only. If your demand increases or decreases, it doesn't matter. It will always remain fixed, the number which you have defined. But when you're deciding elastic, elastic means it will be expanded or decreased as per your requirements. So if as of now you have eight ports and your requirement of 16 ports, elastically it will be increased to 16 ports or the number you need. It is elastic as per the demand. Now, guys, got my got the point, or do you have any questions? Hello, is it clear, or do you have any question? Yeah, it's clear. It's clear. I got it. Okay. Now, okay. Now, what we'll do? Let's go to this. Go to zero three and see. We don't have any videos configured, right? Now. Click on the internet button, go to the VDS, which we have created. Click on host. There is no host. Click on action. Click on add or manage host. So we are going to add a host now, add a host, click on next, click on the host, which we're going to add the host, which we added next. Now it is asking you to provide the physical adapters of that particular switch. So I'll say, let's go ahead and use uplink one, go ahead and use this as a uplink two means I am deciding VMNIC one as uplink one, VMNIC three as uplink two. Click on next. 
आई एम नॉट माई गेटिंग एनी थिंग क्लिक ऑन नेक्स्ट क्लिक ऑन नेक्स्ट फिनिश एंड यू आर डन सी समथिंग इज हैपनिंग नाउ दिस होस्ट हैज बीन एडिड टू दिस वीडियोस एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वेरीफाई सी आई हैव अ न्यू वीडियो इज कॉन्फिगर्ड एंड इट हैज टू अपलिंग्स any guys question or we are good to proceed further do you want to repeat this again no not required it's understood no please okay i was thinking to showcase you guys how to migrate from we switch to vds suppose i have one vds v switch configured right and i want to migrate this v switch to this video, uh, videos if you think you can do it you don't need it fair enough if you want me to showcase i can do that as well so guys need your votes to proceed further otherwise we are done for the day Yeah, we are fine. Migration. Oh, uh, let's move ahead then. Hello. Click on action. Yeah, continue. You, I think you are pending. Click on add and host. Click add host. Provide the host third, which is not the PDS. Click on next. Sikiran, can we include the existing default host also in this? I think it's stuck somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Can I? I didn't get your question, man. Can you please repeat? Yeah, can add the uh, existing host like host one and two was there, no? Three we have created. Okay, actually two is already the part of C. This VDS, if we go to this VDS now and go to this host, we already have host zero one and zero two the part of this VDS. Or I can do one thing, I can connect zero two and zero three to this VDS. So we have two yeah. VDS, right? Okay. Either way okay. will be fine. Okay, that's. Good. If you want, I can click add here, add a uh, switch. Okay, let's click on this. Add or manage host. Click on next. Click on these switches. Guys, give me a minute, please. Sorry. Ah, uh, click on these two host. Click on next. Provide the physical uplink. So, do we have any physical uplinks? So, let's say this is the physical uplink one. Hello, Nikhil. Fine, Alexander. The party could not well. Let's say. Let's say. Click on next. No need to migrate. Next, next. See, something is happening now. This video has three uh, uh, hosts now. So, this test one is visible on every host now. Go to this. Go to zero one zero a. You have two VDS. One the one which we have added, and one which was defaultly added. Okay. So now we are done with VSS VDS. From next week onwards, we will be targeting the NSXT and straight away with the NSXT manager deployment. Yeah, this is the one lab. Your one lab. This one is NSXT open. Yeah, this is the lab. Okay. So, anyone of you have the HOL login? No, still. It no, man. Do one thing. Uh, just type on the Google. If you want to share your screen, you can share your screen, man. I can. Uh, I can let you know how to do that. So, uh, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, shall I make anybody as a host, or if you want to just? I think Santil is asking question, right? Santil, it was okay. you asking questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only asked. Okay, one second. I just make you presenter. Just one second. Okay.
share my screen? Yeah, please. Yeah, you can share. Go to google.com. So, oh, yeah. Just search on HOL. VMware HOL. Type VMware HOL Labs. You need to create your account in this one. It is free of cost. So it will ask you the login at the top. So what do you need to do on the search courses? Yeah. Login. You can create your account. Okay. Uh, as soon as you create your account. So we have your personal ID. We can use it or do we? You can create uh, any of your email account, man. It is free of cost. Okay. We'll get password to Gmail. No, you will get a password on the mail which you have mentioned. Okay, it should come. I am waiting. Go to promotions. It might be in the promotion. Where? Promotion. Top uh, middle right. Yeah, yeah. You can check in spam also. Yeah, yeah, I'm checking. No. It will take some time. It won't take that much of time. I think the registration has been not yet been done, so you can't log in. Sindhil, can you refresh your inbox? There's social as well, right? I see the social uh, folder as well. Primary promotions and social. Okay. Okay. So my... I, will, I will try to do it. No, not an issue. Yeah. So what you need to do, just go back. Not a problem. Uh, just do the registration. Okay. As soon as you're able to log in, I'll paste you the, the lab ID. Okay. That lab you can do. Correct. Yeah. Give me a minute. So this lab you need to do and only do the networking part, not more than that. Okay. So pasting in the chat, I'm thinking where, um, okay. Yeah. So this lab you need to do as soon as you are able to log in. Yeah, I have logged in. Yeah. Yeah. Just search on the courses. Just type virtualization. No, not here. Yeah. Okay. Just type virtualization. Type complete. See, you need to do, do this lab only. Just click, click on enroll. 
स्टार्ट दिस लैब जिस ब्राउज लेटर भी डाउन दैट स्टार्ट लैब द सेम वे यू कैन डू दिस लैब ओके ओके गॉड इट गॉड ओके तो गाइस आई एम डन फॉर द डे uh and if you have not enrolled i request you to enroll so that we can meet next time next weekend yeah sure sure thanks karan for your say thanks karan thanks everyone have a nice day guys yeah. Yeah, thank just, you. just just one second actually i share you the links also the payment details and the url sales tip so have everybody got it in the chat box yeah i got it we got it so i request everybody to please do the fill the form so you will get the recorded video also as of now fire registration has been done five is pending you okay. can make the payment now also or you can pick the payment tomorrow also okay sure sure okay and payment okay so the payment actually we have to two installment right maximum we can give two installment but not for everyone so everybody is giving a two installment there will be a problem one or two guys we can manage it yeah i'll pay two installment okay no problem just okay. you just chat me one to one also later on yeah the screenshot i can mention uh, once paid ha uh, yeah you can send me me also or you can send to my team also if you are paying by any team so you can send to team also you can send me me also i'm just oh. mentioning my number in this chat just from there okay 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 so but you qr code you mention only maximum to 2000 no no uh, qr code actually has a limitation for first time you are paying over a qr code but with the help of upi id you can pay paid any amount okay okay But the QR code has a limitation for security reason. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Can, can you share the bank details? Also. Sorry. Can you share the bank details? Already, share, already there in the PDF. Have you got the PDF file? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please just open the. Yeah, open the. Just go from top to bottom so they will understand everybody. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, yeah, it's there. It's there. These are actually our sales team guy. This is QR code. That top one is the UPI ID of Jeep. If anybody wants to, yeah. You can use your UPI ID also, or go to the bottom. You can tra bank transfer is also there, and anybody having an international customer, they can use PayPal also. And the PayPal over UPI is also there, and pay Western money over identity also is there. Okay, thanks, Riaz. Yes. Okay. We'll okay. Yeah, we'll meet up on next Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Class of will be ten, ten to twelve, right? Ten to. Ten to twelve, right? Ten to twelve. Okay. Fine. Okay, guys. Let's meet next week. Have a nice uh, week ahead. Good night. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks, Karan. Thanks, Kiran. Thanks, Riyad. Yeah. Thanks, Riyad. Thank you, Riyad. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Kiran. Thank you. Riyad, if you are doing a bank transfer, it should be on the Sanya Umar name, ma. Huh? Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. There is our employee. Okay. Yeah. This is authorized PDF is there, so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Riyad. Thank Bye.